You're live, we're live. Hi, G. Facebook, YouTube. Good morning, right? Good morning. We are very much early, much earlier than we usually are. I don't expect much folks to be on. I think most folks are going to ultimately end up catching the live after the fact. That's fine. That's fine. I didn't, I didn't want to leave another week, another week of just sa saucy, very good news, uh, uh, good news, relatively speaking, right? Uh, impactful news, current events to go unspoken on on Haiti Biz News. Uh, and so we that, here we are, right? This is probably honest. Let me tell you, probably going to be one of the quickest shows we've ever done, uh, <laughs> right? Because I have a, I have a flight I got to catch uh, very soon here, and I'm going to be very much dressed down. Of course, one of the first news stories is the coronavirus, which we'll be talking about. So I'm, I'm looking to have to dress down, and uh, I mean honestly, they, folks should let they should allow a uh, exception to allow folks to go with little aerosol spray cans uh, just to avoid. <laughs> but in any case, that's I'm, I'm not TSA. Uh, so it's going to be one of the quickest shows because I, I do, I, I, you know, lots of stuff to cover uh, and I be able to speak on it, right? So, uh, and this is probably going to be like this a little bit. I think next week too, we're going to have a different time as well for the same reason I'll be traveling. Um, I'll be flying around the usual time that I'm on air. So uh, look out for look out for announcement on when we're going to be on air next week as well because it's going to be it's not an a.m. usual time. I do apologize, for folks who are used to, you know, uh, catching us at that particular time, right? So you know, maybe, maybe it's a new show. It's uh, Sundays weekly where we bring news that's going to keep you informed, engaged, and reacting in the most optimal way. Your business investment, entrepreneur activity, right? Uh, and the goal here, of course, is to you know is bring you news impacting. Haiti, uh, with emphasis on the economic impact, with emphasis on uh, how you navigate uh, your uh, desire to make money, <laughs> right? And what that means to you. And of course, we do it in English because there's so many places you can get your news. Uh, 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 but it's mostly in Korea, and it's mostly focused on the triple tie and the nonsense and the politics. Uh, we try to keep it as much as, as impartially as possible here, right? So again, lots to cover, and this is probably going to be one of the quickest shows we've ever done. Remember, usually, if you're able to catch us live, you know it's a conversation we're having. So please, even though I'm going to move quickly, I'm still looking to read comments on air. So don't be shy. Uh, good morning. We got Midu on air. We got uh, a couple folks on IG here: Dam Damuchi, Eminas, Tifi Caribe, uh, a couple of different folks on IG. So good morning. Good morning. Again, don't hesitate. Uh, even though we're going to be running quickly through things, we still I still want your 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 your, your portion, right? Yeah, you guys are my co-host. <laughs> it's not just a guy talking to a camera, right? And so here's some of the things we're going to talk about. First off, uh, coronavirus. We're going to be talking about that. Level four travel advisory. Uh, that's coming. We got, we got a new minister, prime minister, right? Joseph Juth, right? So he's going to be he's going to be talked about today. Uh, kidnapping. Right. We, we're going to give some updates, give some updates on that. And I know that's one of the things that a lot of folks have uh, reached out to me uh, in, in DMs and private conversation to, to ask how are things on that perspective and, and how it's affecting their plans. Uh, of course, because it's a, it's a it's a very scary thing. Right. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Assessio Haiti doing some pretty big, impactful things in Haiti. Uh, we're going to talk about them. Uh, Haiti's uh, is now the world leader in Vedivir, right, exports. So we're gonna talk about that. New electrical network management, some pre-qualifications have gone out, some companies are gonna be, uh, uh, oh, potentially a part of uh, some uh, of the new electrical grid. And there's some really cool stuff about that, particularly since a lot of it's renewables. So we're gonna be talking about that. World Bank uh, is looking to provide $56 million to COP. I say, I'm gonna talk about the specifics to that. Uh, Sunrise Airways, some details have come out uh, related to their uh, uh, new routes uh, from uh, Cap Haitien to uh, San. We're going to give a little update on that. I've talked about this before. We're going to quick, give a quick update on it. There's a program related to birth certificate registration in Central Plateau. You know, that's that's something that needs to be talked about. You know, a little, something that you folks may not even know. <laughs> You're, you can be born without a birth certificate, right? So uh, we're going to talk about that. 456,000 euros to food and security. That's going to be talked about. Haiti Book Festival, 
right? That's going to be talked about. And of course, the Hades women's soccer, that is going to be talked about. <laughs> so as you can see, you got an extra pack show. And, and, I, and I promised you uh, this is going to be the shortest show episode uh, we've done. So so let's 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 see how that works out, right? Uh, Kuya, good morning. Lizzie, good morning. Uh, Kuya from Jamaica. All right, man. I don't, I don't think I have any consistent Jamaica watchers, man. Uh, Wagwan. And uh, certainly hope to see you some more, Kuya, in the chat. Uh, of course, uh, we, we did a brand new YouTube, you know, CGNT location episode uh, where we went to Inch. Which is so awesome, man. My first time I was on air last week, uh, we went to Inch. Uh, first time out there. Uh, honestly, man, one of my, like, I love going out to the Haitian provinces, man. I'm, I'm telling you. In fact, I'm, I'm working actively to build a lifestyle that has me, you know, with ventures out in the provinces, in addition to living in the in the city of, of Pitcherville, Port-au-Prince. Uh, and the fact that I was able to go out there for the first time, uh, I fell in love with Inch. Oh my God, I'm in love with that city. So go check that video out. Again, it's on YouTube. See Janty, most recent video that came out. If you ever watched it, do stop what you're doing and go watch that video, right? Uh, and I guess I'll update it in the, in the link below. Add a little update for myself, uh, update. The link. Let me get that. Boom. All right. And then also, of course, the, everything we talk about is 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 going to be findable on the Haiti Biz News website, right? H Haiti B I Z News dot com. It's a site that again is right below on the ticker. Uh, it's a site that everything that uh, that uh, is re related to the business economy, uh, business environment. Uh, we go to a hundred different websites. We bring them back, right? And, and having a one stop shop, something that I wanted i needed i was going to too many websites so i wanted to create something for you guys for myself and then also share it to you guys so haitibiznews.com of course and of course before we get started share the stream share it hit that share button hit on your feed the more people can come in uh and and and, and engage the the better conversation is going to be and of course what's the point of news if, if people aren't hearing it right so so do me a favor if you're on youtube hit that share button if you're on facebook hit that share button especially especially if you're on on facebook um especially if you're on facebook uh, drop this feed into, uh, you know, there's so many like Florida Haitians and New York and Haitians in Florida and all those different, you know, mass groups. So drop that in there too. We got to keep, keep, keep folks engaged. Right. Uh, and, and okay. All right. All right. Boom. Those are the quick, quick, you know, necessary things I have to, had to talk about. So the very, one of the very first things I want to talk about, let me say what's up to a few folks. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Right back at you. G Darius 10. Cool, yeah, we're back at you, and uh, and uh, great video. Hey, man, listen, uh, Hitch is a beautiful place. I certainly do, certainly do, uh, do want folks to experience the the provinces because it's the safety and et cetera. It's just just so much better. All right, let me get into it. So, coronavirus. I see Daniel Dort artist asking some questions about it, cruises and whatnot. So, coronavirus. First off, let's give you an update. There has been no coronavirus uh, confirmed case in Haiti yet. Zero. We're at zero. We've been on DR. Uh, most recently, I saw a number at, is at 11 at Dominican Republic. Uh, in Haiti, it is still zero. Uh, there was a bus that came in from Dominican Republic where one person just died on the bus, like randomly, like very coronavirus-ish, right? This might just drops dead, right? And 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 those people were quarantined uh, um, on the bus. I hope it wasn't on the bus, <laughs> but they were quarantined in, in a separate place. And 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 for and, and they haven't. No one from that group has come out with a case of coronavirus. And so we're still at zero as I'm sitting from sitting with you today. I still, you know, actually when folks reach out to me, a few folks have reached out and said, you know, Chris, uh, I'm here about the coronavirus. You know, what can you tell me? I'm about to fly in. And I'm and actually, I, I, you know, I don't want to be rude, but I actually want to tell folks, actually, I'd rather you not come to Haiti, not because Haiti's unsafe, but you, you are unsafe, right? You are most likely going to bring in the coronavirus with you, right? And if anything, um, I would ask people, you not to come in, right? Because you're the danger. Haiti isn't the danger here. You are, right? So if anything, uh, anybody who, who who you may be thinking about, oh, I don't know if I should go in Haiti because of coronavirus, you know, you probably should ask, you probably should tell them, yeah, you probably shouldn't go because right now there's zero. And, and the only way the coronavirus is going to come is by someone bringing it in. And there's a very large chance that you as an American, you as a Canadian, uh, you know, with, you know, currently, you know, you guys know how the country, you know, how country 
countries of us and america are being shut down i mean the nba was shut down um because of the risk and people are being diagnosed left and right and all across uh the us and canada it's probably in your best interest to not come and and, and certainly a lot of missionaries a lot of different folks are, are, are you know, I'm, I'm and they are being told not to come because you may bring the coronavirus here to haiti and as we know uh haiti's health care system is effectively non-existent right now the the uh president has in the health minister of haiti has said they have plans in place in fact when you fly to haiti uh in fact i had to fly into i had to do a very quick trip to america haiti and i'm surprised when i got into haiti uh into america it was like nothing there was no screenings i mean a few of the workers had gloves on like the tsa screeners had some gloves on like i think which i think they do anyways in general but then flying back into Haiti, actually, they actually did a, I had a little gun and they checked my temperature and that they actually had to do a second test on me. Um, and so, and then they gave you a little, you know, card. So there were some procedures that certainly made it look like they recognize that uh, coronavirus is a problem and, and they may have a plan. Uh, but I lived in Haiti long enough to know. <laughs> at most, you get is a show. <laughs> so at least they're doing that, which, which I certainly appreciate. That's a big step in the right direction for the Asian government to at least have the competency to put on a show uh, of, of, of competency, right? So, uh, so, <laughs> so uh, that's the most we can provide. Uh, IDB has committed, uh, announced that they committed $2 billion to develop to developing countries, Haiti's included, uh, to provide, um, to provide uh, uh, aid and infrastructure and, and other support to uh, helping uh, uh, countries deal with it when it's when it becomes announced to be an issue, right? So be aware, right? Be aware of that, uh, and 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 certainly another another thing we haven't, no one has really talked about has been the fact that the Haiti textile companies, the Haitian textile companies, are you know are Chinese, Chinese and Asian, right? Uh, and or Taiwanese anyway, and Asian. And they've been very heavily affected from a supply chain perspective because so much uh, of the inputs, a lot of the inputs, hard like the hardware that, that go into the textile market in, in Haiti, uh, comes from China. And the fact that they, you know, Asia has been so ravished, uh, it's really affected the Haitian textile company. Remember, last time we were on the Haitian textile company uh, industry, uh, in fact, boom, even during the uh, the crisis, the political crisis that gripped the country last year, that shut the country down, effectively an eternal uh, embargo of, of GDP activity. And, but yet still showing growth, despite that the labor force went down by about 3,000. We did see substantial growth uh, in the textiles and, and, and the textiles continues to be one of the largest export sectors uh, in, the, uh, in the Haitian economy. And so the fact that there's some stressors, some conversations of uh, and some uh, some folks in the industry who have expressed difficulty, pretty big difficulty in, in being able to function because they cannot get uh, what they need uh, out of Asia. Uh, certainly has something to think about. Certainly, as we are very appreciative of the fact that there isn't any hard coronavirus cases yet, uh, there is still potentially going to be an economic impact um, because of the coronavirus and things and folks you know, unable to get it within that industry, unable to get uh, inputs and certain supplies uh, into, right? So that's that's as much as we talk about uh, for the coronavirus. Uh, the short short of it is it hasn't come to Haiti just yet. Uh, and we hope to stay, keep it that way. And, and if anything, I'd advise you people not to come uh, until it's calm in your country because we don't, we can't, you know, Haiti very is, vulnerable, is very vulnerable and, and, and we, and, and really, uh, we don't, <laughs> we don't watch. <laughs> so this might be the second time I've ever told people not to come to Haiti, <laughs> not because Haiti's unsafe, but because you're unsafe. <laughs> right. So uh, another time was during the pay lock and, and the roads were blocked, obviously. And, and again, Haiti wasn't unsafe necessarily. It was just that um, you couldn't go anywhere because the roads were blocked. Right. But on that same topic, we're going to move to our next next uh, new story, which is travel for advisory. The United States government has come out uh, um, and said that uh, level uh, Haiti is on par with uh, Iraq, Somalia, uh, North Korea, uh, a lot of other countries that are going through uh, very Afghanistan, uh, very dangerous 
places and, and things, Syria, uh, he's on that list, right? And and so America is not to travel. This also has uh, meant that you know certain uh, online places you can't find Haiti destinations. For example, Expedia, you can't you won't find any of the hotels there. You know, Facebook. Like, hey, you send Expedia a tweet. <laughs> like, I was going to do anything. Uh, their lawyers are more are more uh, important uh, to them than some random tweets of, of Haitians. But it was worth a try. And those who tried, I appreciate you. Uh, and, of course, you know, it leads to why, right? It leads to, is Haiti really any different? Uh, and, of course, the big reason driving the level four advisory is something, is a story we're going to be, uh, really connected to all of this, and I'm just jump right into it. Which is the kidnapping. There was a huge, has been a huge spike in kidnapping, uh, going going uh, on for a, a few weeks now. Uh, we talked about this last episode. Uh, basically, the fact that it was indiscriminate, uh, from grabbing folks from all walks of life, from those just regular Haitians to uh, Haitians of the higher tier. Um, and and the matter of fact, the Miami Herald came out with the new story. Uh, maybe a day or two before uh, the level of travel, level four advisory, uh, that basically shared two stories of uh, two uh, Americans who were kidnapped, uh, one a former soldier, another an actual Haitian American. Uh, and the and the the fact is the the, the reality is is that uh, arrests are being made. So let's be clear on that. Uh, as I mentioned last time, uh, there is going to be found to be a connection at the senatorial level. Uh, and one connection that has already been made, there was a senator, P.S. Takas senator uh, by the name of uh, Ked Lair Augustin, who was uh, arrested uh, just a few days ago um, because his car, he was driving a car that was uh, without a plaque, a car that fit the description uh, of, uh, fit a description of a kidnapper's car that was involved in over nine kidnappings, right? Uh, and he was arrested after such a brief car chase and, and, and that's currently, currently consuming the uh, domestic media of, uh, of him trying to explain himself, right? And so that, as I expressed to you, there was going to be a senatorial connection um, to, all, to all this, right? Um, but the, the reality is that what I, what I need to key on, what folks you need to understand is that um, when kidnaps, kidnappings happen, uh, folks know where where they are, right? Everyone knows where they go. They go to Matissa, they go to uh, La Saline, uh, and in particular, Village de Dieu, uh, Village of God, for, you know, for those uh, not so French inclined. And that's where they're held, right? Uh, so it's not it's not a secret, right? It's 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 known. But the the thing is, the police are, are unable. The PNH Haitian police are unable to enter that area because the guns that a lot of these gangs have are so many and, um, and, and the community ultimately protects them, right? As well, right? Um, so it's, 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 it's these things that ultimately led to level of travel for advisory, right? For, for America sustaining Haitians, uh, or you know, Americans should not be in the country. Right now, the reality is, is that um, uh, it, you know, the situation is improving, right? The situation is improving. Um, there, uh, we're going to talk about the um, the uh, police union in just in just a moment. It's important that we talk about that because everything's connected to to each other <laughs> with, with everything that's happening. Uh, certainly, it's not news that I want to report on at this in a situation in a time where um, uh, things are so tough economically. Um, but if the question is, should you not come, if, if any, which, is, which is what I'm asked constantly in my DMs and, and comments uh, in, for Haiti, uh, should you not come because of X, Y, Z? And my, my response is, is that, um, uh, it, depending on, so put it like this, the folks who have gotten uh, kidnapped, uh, there's certain things you should know of how they behave that, that led to where, where to them being kidnapped. Uh, they're out very late at night. Uh, 
and, and for example, the Miami Herald stories, in both cases, they were out around 10 p.m. driving around uh, Delma area, right? Lower Delma in particular. Uh, those are areas that anyone who knows and, and given the climate, you wouldn't be out, shouldn't be out at that time, right? Um, so I, what I'm trying to allude at, and I'll just tell you, is that there's certain things you can do from a behavioral perspective, certain places you can avoid uh, that could allow you to still have a good time in the country while uh, avoiding this nonsense until you know the police do get a full firm hold on the situation. And that's what, and that's why I, I, I still, I'm still here. <laughs> I am going to work. And that's why also I don't mind, I, I, I tell folks to come, just be aware and be a little more careful than you usually would be um, when in the country, right? And that is, again, maybe enter a little sooner, you know, certainly avoid, um, you know, stick to the more touristic, you know, parts of Pitchmanville and Upper uh, you know, Tomasin and those areas, uh, and 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 just be aware of your surroundings, right? Uh, and also that I'm, I'm still very confident within the next month or two, uh, there will be a certain a, a, a large degree of improvement in the conditions uh, in the country from that perspective. So that's as much as I can tell you about it about the situation. Uh, we certainly do hope uh, things improve. Level Travel Vote for Advisory uh, is, is devastating for the Haitian tourist econ uh, e uh, economy that was already you know, reeling from the last Level 4 Travel Advisory uh, and just everything else. Uh, and it's, it's uh, I certainly, my heart's out to, to a lot of business owners I know in that space uh, that are, are gonna be suffering even further, right? And that's where we're gonna end that new story. The next has to do with the new prime minister, right? With 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 everything that's been happening, uh, we've had uh, a new prime minister um, uh, uh, elected, not elected, <laughs> decreed. I'm sorry, decreed by uh, King Moise, his first of his name. Uh, uh, his a little bit about Joseph Joth, uh, and I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong. Excuse him, right? Uh, he's 58 years old, and prime minister of Haiti, right? Uh, born uh, October 17th. 1961 in Tomad. By the way, we have a story about Tomad in a moment. He's a civil engineer by training, right? Uh, he's first uh, worked uh, for, the, for the United Nations uh, from 1989 uh, to 2006 as a consultant, right? As a liaison officer, logistics administrator, regional director of international care, right? And uh, for, for about eight or to seven regional offices. Right. Uh, and and then, you know, before joining as the Minister of Environment under the Moise government uh, in 2018, he actually worked uh, under Jack Guy Lafranton as a special advisor for special projects, public works and procurement. Right. Uh, and at, and then and since uh, he was also uh, he shared before becoming prime minister currently, he was additionally the minister of economy and finance uh, during the recent uh, reshuffle. Of us uh, of, um, of September 2019. So he was he had two he had two posts: uh, the Minister of Economy and Finance, and also the Minister of, of, of Environmental Protection. Uh, and now, of course, he is uh, the uh, the uh, Prime Minister. Uh, he also has you know a, a large uh, uh, base and understanding of uh, BMPod, which is for a long time. Uh, handles a lot of the financial aid packages of, of different governments, right? And uh, also speaks Creole, French, English, and Spanish, right? So a little bit about him. Um, how long he lasts? I'm, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I made the mistake once uh, of of actually doing a, a detailed research of uh, of a lot of these cabinet guys. For example, the guy who replaced him, I kind of did, did some snooping. Um, but I've, I've learned that it's kind of Kind of pointless to uh, do research on these guys because uh, they, they they're swapped out so quickly, <laughs> right? Um, and so we'll see how Joseph, how long Prime Minister Joseph Joth uh, sticks around this time. He may finish the term with uh, King Moise. He may not. Uh, one thing for sure is that the uh, before being nominated, uh, he 
there was a lot of back and forth behind the scenes between the United States, the opposition, uh, to try to get a prime minister that was a uni uni unity prime minister. Uh, but they were unsuccessful. Uh, and in fact, he just, King Moise, just as a king, just woke up one morning and said, yeah, uh, you know, all this talk behind the scenes, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm going to make this guy prime minister. And that was it, right? Uh, which continues uh, King Moise's long uh, ten uh, uh, practice of of uh, <laughs> saying one thing and doing another in public, right? We'll leave it. We'll leave that be. So let's let's keep moving uh, uh, to the next news story, right? And again, I'm sorry I'm not reading the comments as I usually do, but we gotta, you know, we got I gotta track through these news stories quickly. Right, Assessio Haiti uh, is a uh, company slash entity uh, working out of the Central Department. Uh, who actually, I skipped a news story, right? And the police union, I forgot to talk about that. The last sort of pseudo political story, and the police union, uh, the you know, those past few weeks there were has been a lot of civil unrest sourced from the police wanting a union. Uh, and finally, after weeks of back and forth and, and some violence between the police or some of the, those who were fired uh, and uh, the military, finally, the police has um, finally the police has uh, were successful. They, the government has announced that the, there will be a police union. And now, we don't know the specifics and the details necessarily to to who is going to be part of the police union and, and whether or not some of the officers who were fired um you know be trying to raise the this cause are going to be allowed to incorporate obviously a lot of these police officers are trying very hard to be a part of the police union um that's been announced uh, my guess would be that uh you know the government will try to make the police union as uh impotent as possible right by, by trying to put one of their guys in the head spot and derail and slow things, just have it be a more figurative uh, 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 organization, right? Rather than something that actually holds power. That's, I'm sure, what the government wants. Uh, but uh, on the side of the police, the police, I'm sure, generally want the police union to be able to impact improvement uh, and, and, and leverage power to be able to improve the situation, including uh, improving benefits, uh, access to healthcare, access to general care pensions, et cetera. So we'll see how that goes. I, I'm of the opinion that it's good news. I'm of the opinion, and many are, that it only makes sense. And in times like this of insecurity, you know, it's hard to ask police officers to risk their lives to protect the general population when they haven't received a raise in over 10 years and what they were making before have dropped by over 60% in real terms, right? In terms of what they can purchase with that same amount of money, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, and, and certainly we do hope that it leads to an overall better security situation in the country. Back to the IET story. Uh, it's a uh, entity organization on Central Plateau, support uh, peanuts primarily, but they're also um, peanut farmers, but they also um, help with mango, moringa, lemon, uh, lemon producers. Uh, and, and what they do is mainly to provide quality seeds to farmers. In addition to uh, helping these farmers sell their products interna internationally, domestically, abroad, right? But but what's most important too is that they actually uh, work very closely with the farmers they sell their, their products to, and visit these farmers uh, uh, throughout the gestation of of the uh, you know, farming season, and uh, and and help them with training, facilitation, uh, and and in, in, in some cases even financing. And other aspects uh, for their operation. Um, they've since distributed over the six years they've been in operation 1.4 million uh, seeds, which is incredible. And they've noted uh, over $200,000 in income to farmers in the six years they've been in operation, which is again, absolutely phenomenal, right? And, and they've begun and have actually for, for some time producing their own brand of peanut, uh, peanut butter called La Vie Spicy Peanut Butter where they purchase uh, uh, peanuts directly from the farmers uh, and then uh, produce and resell uh, internationally as well. So this is uh, an incredible uh, entity because they, they also have a, a not-for-profit arm in addition to being a registered company uh, in Haiti. 
Uh, and, and so it's, it, it's an incredible effort in the central plateau, by the way, is where they're located specifically. Uh, something we want to certainly highlight, these are sort of new stories that uh, one day this will be nothing but these sort of new stories. <laughs> and we can just skip over a lot of the political nonsense, right? So hats off to the SACO IET. Uh, certainly we're going to keep an eye on them. And, and, and at some point we'll see if we can do a collaboration on a CGNT on location with these guys. Next new story has to do with the Haiti's, you know, Haiti is uh, officially uh, the world's leading export of vetiver uh, essential oil. Now, what is vetiver essential oil? It's a, in effect, if you are a perfume or a cologne wearer, uh, you probably have in a part of that liquid vetiver, vetiver oil. It is an oil that allows certain scents to store uh, easier vetiver itself has a very unique scent to it at its base, uh, and it's used. As Chanel um, uh, is a big purchaser of Haitian vetiver oil. Uh, another, if you're in Canada, there's another company called Seven Virtues that's very well known out there that also uses uh, quite a bit of quantity vetiver oil. Now, uh, so vetiver itself, by the way, way it looks looks like, like a bush. And but it, it, it tunes very well to the climate of Haiti. Uh, it, uh, it it likes this particular zone. It, what's very good about it too? It's it's pretty. It's almost like a weed. You don't really have to water it much, right? You don't really have to prune it much. It's just something that uh, it just grows and grows by itself, right? Um, uh, and so you know we you know they producers. So there's a company uh, down in Okai. Uh, called a uh, Fragere, uh, Agri Supply Company Fragere, uh, and uh, they work and facilitate an area from Pont Salut to Aquin. Uh, and uh, 60% of Haiti's vape beer actually is coming through that company currently. Uh, and they're impacting about 27,000. 27,000 families are being impacted by this operation, right? And additionally, they've uh, come out and said they uh, have installed, you know, Okai Hospital, the largest hospital in uh, in Okai, uh, one of the largest. I'm sorry. Uh, they've stated that they've actually gone and installed, uh, they've installed uh, solar panels on the roof of that hospital. Right. So, um, great news. Great news uh, from an economic perspective. Uh, certainly, we'll be looking at Vetiver as something that could potentially impact. A positive GDP and positive economic growth for the country. Uh, it's uh, it's it's one of those crops that uh, it's it's ideal because again it's it's agricultural based. Uh, it's something that, as we know, Haiti has a lot of land sitting idle and unproductive, uh, and it's something that can be grown just about anywhere in Haiti, and something that um, uh, many people should look into as a potential source for for income if one has land. Uh, in the provinces in Haiti, given th the potential benefits of the Vetiver product, right? Next new story has to do with the new electrical network. Um, you know that's that uh, King Moise has been pushing for a long time. Uh, the new uh, aspect of this has been pushed to trying to get the provinces electricity, uh, and there's been certain uh, companies that have been pre-qualified uh, for bids and. and uh, <clears throat> and uh, RFPs, right? For, you know, for, for certain proposals uh, in the South. You know, and, and by the way, the this is the you know, for the sake of transparency, the Haitian government has come out and said uh, this is part of a private, 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 <laughs> making things private. <laughs> that word is killing me right now. Of aimed at making you know the electric electricity system more efficient. That's costly, right? As well as expanding the access to electricity, in particular to the provinces, right? So uh, the short list goes as follows: in the south, in the Okai area, um, they're, they're looking they're looking to add about five megawatts of solar and about twenty megawatts of natural gas to that area, and the in the in the uh, companies of Cashman Preload, Sour Genetics, Segura IT, and Inter Energy. And by the way, Segura Energy is composed of uh, JCM Power Corporation and FMO. Energy is composed of Caribe Energy, Winco, and Crowley Petroleum. Uh, they've, win, they've won the uh, initial, they're pre-qualified, put like that. They've been pre meaning they still have to bid 
uh, and they still have to provide a full proposal of how they're going to actually implement it and the cost associated with it. And and but what's interesting about uh, about these these lists is that you know there these companies that win the rights will be able to not just produce electricity and not just transport the electricity, but most importantly distribute distribute electricity, meaning that they can collect uh, money directly from the people receiving it. Uh, where traditionally the distribution portion, the port, you know, has been controlled by Idiash. So that's that's something that's very notable difference uh, of how things are being done uh, going forward for the provinces, which uh, is important. Um, and one thing that many investors have said stated that it's hard for them to uh, invest in the electrical network in Haiti, uh, knowing that Idiash struggles to collect money. Uh, uh, from those receiving electricity, right? And, uh, and it puts them in an untenable position where Ilyash does not pay, right? Because they don't have the money to pay, right? Now, traditionally, the Ilyashes receive subsidies from the Haitian government uh, to make up the difference. Uh, and the difference can be as much as only 20% of, or actually less than that, 10% of folks actually paying uh, their invoices uh, but recently, over the past few months, EDH has not been receiving any support from the Haitian Treasury to make up the difference uh, between what is uh, owed and what and what is produced. Right. And additionally, we have uh, you know Nipes in the Miaguan area uh, that uh, they're looking to add six megawatts of solar and twenty five point five megawatts of natural gas. Right. The same companies have been pre qualified. Cashman preload serogenics, Sergo Haiti, and Inner Energy. And additionally, the northeast uh, of Haiti, uh, there is an estimate of 20 megawatts of electricity. Now, though that portion hasn't been broken down into how much is solar, how much is uh, the Sergo Sigura AD and Inner Energy uh, also are have been pre-qualified of uh, to provide energy for 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 those areas as well. Now. My take on it, uh, I think this is fantastic news in particular, uh, since we're looking at uh, natural uh, clean energy options. Now, is it enough electricity for those areas? No, uh, you know, it's, it's a drop in the bucket for the amount of electricity that's actually needed, but certainly it's a step in the right direction. And, uh, and the fact that we're, we are very much considering you know, clean energy, that is a, a very big plus, plus a very big positive uh, for for Haiti's future, right? Next news story has to do with the World Bank. World Bank approves fifty six million dollars to support the urban development in Cap Haitien. Uh, we're looking uh, what's going to be done with that. So uh, with that fifty six million dollars, uh, first off, they're looking to increase access to quality public spaces. They're going to be investing in cleaning and, and, and improving public spaces in in, in Cap Haitien. Uh, they're going to be looking to improve the mobility, road safety, and reduce the vulnerability. Of urban infrastructure, right, right, uh, versus natural disasters and, and et cetera. Looking to upgrade part of the Cap Haitian's waterfront, right? As we know, Cap Haitian has the potential for its waterfronts incredible, but uh, it's in very a very poor state, right? So looking to see what they can do to improve uh, that waterfront. Uh, they're looking to finance the rehabilitation of so roads and neighborhood infrastructures to improve living conditions. Right, um, and and then finally strengthen the government's capacity to maintain these investments. Right, so it's not you know Haiti has for a long time not really f lacked in the capacity of getting funds to do things; they've failed in the capacity of maintaining. And so this money is looking to uh, impact in that direction. Now, uh, my take, of course, is that uh, I don't trust the Haitian government with a penny of any funds anywhere. Uh, and I certainly do hope that the World Bank does as much possible to control that process and keep it out of the Haitian government's hands directly. Because believe me, that 56 million will become 56 dollars <laughs> in terms, of, you know, actually what gets dispersed um, if it goes uh, through the Haitian government, right? So I'll, I'll certainly wait to hear more word about how things are going to be structured from that perspective, and share that with you guys, right? Uh, Sunrise Airways. Uh, we did report this before that they're going to be adding new routes from Capaycien to uh, Capaycien to uh, San Domingo, which is great news. 
Uh, there are going to be two AM flights. The flight's going to be in the AM, one at 11, another one at 12. That takes folks to um, to uh, to uh, you know, the, these two cities each day. There, another one flies back, right? And the expect, they're expected overall flow is going to be about 360 some odd people uh, per day, which is, again, very important news for Cap IC and very important news for the country because the more we can congest, uh, the better the country is from an overall perspective, right? The fact that everything has to come through Port au Prince right now uh, uh, is bad. <laughs> And Port Prince becomes too important, um, and 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 Haiti and Port Prince cannot support. Uh, one reason why Port Prince is so filthy is because it's vastly, vastly overpopulated compared to the infrastructure that exists to support the people that are here. Right. So let's continue on. Uh, there, there's a birth, there's been a birth certificate registration campaign uh, in uh, the Central Plateau. Uh, Three hundred uh, community leaders. Uh, and including government officials, uh, have registered over 6,000 people, 3,000 of them children, 2,500 were women, 500 were men, uh, with the with registration numbers, you know, NIF, your NIFs, that's, that's your social security number, and also provided actual birth certificates. You know, I can call them acte de uh here in Haiti. Uh, and the, but, but the specific, specifically for four cities, Belader, Tomad, Tomasik, and uh, to my Sikh, by the way, shout out to Tom Sikh. That's my uh, wife's um, family's hometown. Uh, that's where they're from. And then, and then, and Circula Source, right? Um, they uh, these towns have had, um, you know, and that's something that folks don't really appreciate is that in Haiti you can indeed be born without a birth certificate and in fact one thing that's very interesting about Haiti is that even with the birth certificate you're not provided you're not actually a recognized legal person until about uh, the age 18 no until 18 At 18 then you you actually go to um, the, uh, uh, the bureau uh, of uh, legal documentation or documentation services and then receive your what's in effect a social security number which is bizarre to a lot of us, you know, come out of the states who right away, as soon as you're born, uh, you're brought a social security number and it tracks with you. Uh, and of course, that is a major issue of fraud and uh, uh, difficulty and issues because of the fact that you do have such a long time where, in effect, you don't really exist, right? Which affects a lot of different things, including census tracking, and et cetera. And, and, and many provinces can go. Many places in the provinces can go, uh, you can go your whole life potentially, never actually interact with the government. And, uh, and so this is a very important thing, just uh, from a perspective of a government that uh, is accountable to its people by being able to provide services to people by ensuring those people are recorded as existing, <laughs> right? So, so we certainly hope more of this happens and because uh, uh, it's necessary. One thing I, I'm, I gotta share is just, that's one thing when I, while I was in Ish, I noticed the amount of motos in particular that didn't have plates on them, right? The, the, almost all motos didn't have plates. When I asked folks about why that was, uh, they told me, yeah, we, yeah, there was, there's no, you, you kind of have to go to Port au Prince to register your, your moto, and no one wants to do that, right? And so a big issue to um, why there is a lack of documentation is that the government itself has not registered um, the infrastructure to provide documentation, right? So moving on, 460, 467,000 euros to food insecurity. The Belgian government has donated to the United Nations um, uh, FAO um, and to, to provide uh, vulnerable populations, in particular to Haiti. Uh, Haiti has been, uh, since the political crisis, uh, and also because of constant, uh, this is like the third year of very heavy drought, uh, has had tremendous food insecurity. In fact, 3.7 million people are living in uh, what's called qualified as very, very highly food insecure, um, almost famine level in the country. Uh, and so this is part of a much larger um, package uh, by the UN and by USAID and USAID to uh, help those uh, 
very heavily affected currently by you know the potential crisis of um, uh, not getting food, <laughs> right? And it's incredible to be talking about that in 2020 uh, for Haiti, but but that is just the reality of where we're at currently, and 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 one of the reasons why uh, it is so important to invest in the agricultural sector because uh, right now uh, and provide the proper uh, legal framework for the agriculture to to prosper because at the moment uh, it's lacking, right? Uh, one of the things that we'll look, be looking to do with this uh, injection is to provide seeds uh, for farmers, provide equipment, tillage, and also receive additional training, right, um, for uh, gardening techniques and, and storage, et cetera, as well. Next new story has to do with the Haiti Book Festival, right? The Haiti Book Festival will go on to annual uh, starting actually in Tomad uh, Central Plateau. Yeah, a lot of Central Plateau news <laughs> uh, today. Uh, and uh, the, the first edition is called Livre en Action, Books in Action. And the theme is the emancipation of youth of, of Tomad. Uh, that's where it, it's going to be. But they're, they're looking to uh, expand the book fair to other places across Haiti uh, in the coming months. The final news story has to do with Haitian women's soccer. Uh, I, I know it's not necessarily a business story, but that's just a feel-good story. Uh, and Haitian women's soccer, the U-20 in particular, uh, where it lights out this past season, uh, this past tournament, in fact, uh, that was that took place in the Dominican Republic. Uh, they beat Guyana 3-0. They beat Trinidad 7-0. They beat Barbados 12-0. They beat St. Kitts and Nevis 7-0. <laughs> They beat Cayman Islands, eight and zero, oh, and they beat Jamaica by four and one. I mean, absolutely dominating the tournament, right? People, you know, looked at their calendars and saw Haiti, and they were like, "Crap, <laughs> we don't want to play those guys," right? And that that feels great. I got to tell you, as a Haitian, uh, you, you, you used to be beat down, right? To know that uh, we were just so absolutely dominating. Uh, one woman in particular, uh, Mel Melchi Dalia Dumorne, right, it was aka a Corventina, Corventina is what her nickname is, uh, uh, had over 12 goals alone, 12 goals alone, and actually she was named MVP of the competition. The kind of, she was named MVP, which is awesome, phenomenal. Um, uh, so the, the, during the semifinals, unfortunately, um, and we, you know, they played their hearts out against Mexico. Mexico seems to be the bane of Haitian, Haiti soccer. Um, you know, they, they played hard, you know, one, one, uh, was the end score, but unfortunately, unfortunately I had a little tear when this happened. Um, and we lost in a shootout, uh, to Mexico and Mexico ultimately went on to play the United States. I'll be honest, I have no idea who won that because <laughs> I was already watching for Haiti. But, um, but again, hey, Mexico did it. Again. As you know, Mexico beat our, our male team in the recent Gold Cup um, uh, last year, as, as, you, as you may know. So, you know, so that's what it is. But I can tell you um, up until that point, uh, watching the other games, uh, it was great to see the other dominance of, of Haiti athletes. Uh, and something real special about our Haitian women. Haitian women are, are you, know, you know, last year we had Nerli, uh, who was a phenomenal player, uh, who's now playing in, in France. Um, and I, I can tell you, if we can get Nerli and 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 Duma, Dum, Dumor, Dumerne on one team, and, and maybe allow them to play on, on the guys' team. I don't know, man. We <laughs> we may have a, we may have a legit shot uh, on the on the on the guys' side things right so these are exceptional eight players and that's and that's the feel-good story i want to end on uh for for today uh i'm a little over the 30 minute cap that i, I thought i could get the new stories through um let me read the read the live comments really quick um uh, let's go back all the way up here let's see we got maria arthur saying loves the show all right thank you uh, we have Elis Elisenta, 
uh, saying good morning. Good morning right back to you. We got Kuya saying there's uh, eight COVID cases, uh, or, or sorry, nine, nine, eight or 19. Eight COVID cases, 19 confirmed here in Jamaica, right? So somewhere between eight or 19. Uh, we got Lita Midget. Hey, what's up? Uh, good morning. Finally caught a, a live. Haiti don't need to accept no one coming in vessels or flights straight up, you know, um, though, uh, I don't know. I need to come back in the country. So that, 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 that <laughs> shouldn't happen just yet. Um, we got, uh, missionaries, but missionaries, you stay, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll leave, we'll leave that. Uh, we'll leave that <laughs> for the, a longer conversation. We got Kuya guys work is to close your borders. Um, and, and get prepared for it, be proactive. Um, you know, uh, I, so just a quick word to the wise, uh, Haiti is very dependent on uh, the diaspora and people coming in uh, to do activity, uh, especially right now where we already have an effective embargo with the travel advisory that the Haitian, the US government put on us uh, for us to self-impose and also say, hey, nobody can come in. I mean, that will be to punch that. I mean, we already remember Haiti is already experiencing a recession. Uh, we're at a negative GDP growth because of the pay lock that just happened. And and this is, you know, closing our borders. Um, as much as, much as um, I'm telling folks not to come, um, it would very be very bad for the Haitian economy uh, if folks did not come at all. Um, because <laughs> like me, for example, I'm in and out all the time. I'm doing a lot of investment in the country. I'm doing a lot of, even I'm not just, you know, doing business stuff. I'm, I'm buying food, I'm buying, you know, my day-to-day -day needs. And a lot of people in that similar, very similar boat. And, and that would, again, very much affect the government, the, the economy negatively. So as, as much as I, I want folks to be safe and I want folks who even have the slightest hint of COVID conscious and stay their ass home, <laughs> right? Uh, I wouldn't, advocate for the Haitian border to close, right? Um, see June here, I come, rain, shine, coronavirus, kidnappings, I don't care, I'm coming. All right, good to hear. Just again, just, you know, as I, as I'm, as I told folks, just play it smart, right? Um, play it smart, don't be out late until this stuff, you know, uh, is, is, has calmed down. Um, but you can still go out to certain, you know, a lot of the general places go out to eat all the places I've talked about on see Genty, <laughs> you can go out there. Um, but just, just play it, play it wise, uh, until the, the police have fully um, controlled things. JH says the police union will help the general security. Great. I agree with you. Uh, we are working with the central oil companies in Haiti called Crow Essence Oil. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Crow Essence, uh, we've talked about here on the program. Uh, you can purchase them at your Whole Foods. Uh, so Crow, you know, since uh, is the one for some great work. Lizzie, I used to buy Vitivir soap. Very nice, distinct scent. Great maintenance, low, low maintenance uh, crop, uh, Lizzie says. Ronald Etienne said, uh, big ups to see Genty Queens in the building. What up, Ronald Etienne? What's up, man? What's up, the Queens? What's up? <laughs> happy, happy. Hope to see you again there, Ronald. Um, facts, no more transitions. What, uh, oh, God. Hey, let's see, fraud controlling the voting systems, people with multiple identities. Oh yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think you're talking about the identity uh, part when I was talking about, right? So that's, yeah, that's a big part of uh, what made the voting season so uh, precarious uh, because of that aspect, right? Um, girl power, talking like this, I think, I think Lizzie was refer referencing our uh, uh, soccer team. We got Thomas Fernand saying, Haiti soccer mean, in green and uh, or, or, if, uh, wait, how it is mean men and women. The leagues tries every year to stop Haiti from advancing too far matches. Respect to the women, seriously. I totally agree with you. Um, Kuya, power to the Haitian ladies. Uh, Mexico, again, <laughs> Mexico has become the bane of our existence. You're absolutely right. And uh, have they paid the men's coach? I don't, you know, I don't know the stat status of the men's coach. I know there was a lot of back and forth. Um, with the Haitian government, you know, just being broke or saying they're broke and, and, and that guy earning obviously a, a pay increase for his fantastical coaching of, of our team to, to as far as they gotten for the, for the men's side. Um, I haven't heard any stories on that. They're out. 
and to certainly report uh, report it when I do hear a resolution. Um, but as it stands right now, I still still don't believe that that's been resolved, right? Uh, and let me look at the IG. Do not have anything in IG? And that's it. So listen, guys, I got to get going. I got a flight to get ready for. <laughs> so I'm not going to be on uh, any longer. But I, I do want to tell folks, um, please go check out the YouTube CGNT. Uh, I went to Ish, and I also highlighted um, SNE, which is this awesome organization doing some great work. Also, the Central Plateau um, uh, organizing uh, the youth to, who are that live there into um, uh, much more effective entrepreneurship using technology innovation. I spoke at the event, and I'm, I'm you know you can see me holding my mic and talking during the video. It was an awesome experience to be able to correlate some of my experiences in the sector I'm in, uh, um, business-wise, and how folks keen on it. I gave folks a step-by-step -step guide to to be able to you know. Uh, improve themselves uh, and what they do uh, using the internet. And so uh, I was very happy to be a part of that. So, so again, watch that video, uh, you know, do watch it and then and see what you can do to support the ILC Innovative Learning Concepts a Center, Innovative Learning Center uh, uh, over at Mir Bale run by Jackie Poto. Uh, they can always use a donation, right? Because they're doing such great work. So, you know, do check them out. And uh, if you can't donate, you know, consider at least sharing their story. Maybe someone else could. Right, because they're doing some really important work. I'm telling you, the, the, the future of Haiti, mark my words, it's going to come out of Central Plateau, right? <laughs> right, and and additionally, uh, you know, uh, the Haiti Biz News website, do check that out. Uh, everything we talked about is is at the Haiti Biz News website. If if this episode really helped you understand what's going on in the country a little better, do share the stream, share it, share it in your WhatsApp, share it uh, on your Facebook, uh, share it in some Facebook groups, um, and and uh, uh, and also, you know, for folks who may be watching this for the first time, know that, right? Know that um, uh, we're we're here every Sunday. Uh, we try to be here at eleven, um, but you know, we have to be a little flexible. Next week, uh, we're probably going to be later. Uh, we're probably looking at probably around seven p.m. Honestly, next week is what I'm eyeing. But but I'll announce the exact time on my Instagram and on my Facebook. So if you're not following those already, you know, it's S E E Genty. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to find that there. Uh, and again, that's where we're going to end it. Listen, guys, thanks so much for those who were able to watch. Um, uh, and let's see, you know, thanks. I got Kuya telling me thank you. Thank you, Lizzie, Mike and Del, Thank you, guys. All right. And that's where we're going to end it. Listen, we'll be back at it again. <laughs> Peace.